I'm Mark and uh, I'm sat in what's becoming the permaculture forest garden at Rockaway Park in Temple Cloud, Bristol. We try and utilise everything so we hardly throw anything away and and if we've, we've had to do this massive pruning on this oak tree that's in front of me, you know, we'll, we'll end up using that wood to build something. We, we will not waste it. Um, and likewise, anything that comes through, we'll find a way of using it. And we, like the metal drums that I was showing, we've cut, you know, everything we can always... I want, I want the garden project to be, um, as much as anything, a sort of examples of what can be done with stuff that you're chucking away. Um, it's all about the recycling for me. I've been obsessed with it all my life. In fact, Magnus, who was living here once a while back, he got a job um, singing with Hawkwind, and and he was sitting here. We're doing this thing with Mike Bat, and and uh, everybody was somehow found this amusing, you know. But I said, well, frankly, Mike Bat was one of the Wombles, and you know the Wombles recycled everything and made it into something new, and. For people of my generation, they were a massive influence, you know. And I thought, rather than feeling, you know, it's, it was funny because it was like a joke that you were doing this thing with Mike Bat. And I was thinking, but I think he was a bigger influence on us than Crass, probably, you know. And that would be the one that everybody asks you about. But in actual fact, the Wombles probably influenced us more. My name's Laura and I'm here at Rockaway helping with the various projects that they've got going on here. Yeah, it's an important like connection with a green space and being involved in working with wildlife and just having it around you, simply having it in your vicinity is, um, yeah, it's really good for the soul and we want to try and help bring people out of their time in isolation when the restrictions um, lift a bit and we can invite people to come here safely to participate or just to enjoy the views. So at the beginning of the first lockdown we've, we've always had this footpath that ran through this field and it's been underused and he hardly ever saw anyone on it but as lockdown kicked in more and more people walking up and down and we can see them from our kitchen window and I've always thought that this is the best view in the whole place it's got there's a, a windmill straight ahead um, it's just open it's the only place where grass grows nicely uh, and it's got this awesome view and I always thought it'd be a nice thing to put to put a bench here for, for the people that walk, have suddenly taken to walking up and down footpaths um, to sit and rest. It's quite a steep hill. It's just a great place to be. So um, the bench was was an offcut of a huge piece of oak that, that somebody who'd had a unit here before had left. It, it, they basically cut the good planks off it and this was the offcut and I couldn't bear throwing anything away. So I'd put it to one side five or six years ago and, and then obviously when the lockdown came, I showed it to Hannah, who's a wood carver, who's been staying here for lockdown, um, and said, can we make this into a, a, a bench for the, you know, for the locals to sit on when they're walking up and down? And uh, she's carved it all beautifully, as I'm sure you'll take pictures of. And it's been an absolute pleasure to watch everybody wander up and down and I think it sort of meant that people have got to know each other more and acknowledge each other and realise where you know that we're all connected and one thing and another and um, it's great for us because as we're you know as we're talking about we're trying to introduce this forest garden project and 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 we'd like the involvement of the community we'd like we'd like every everyone to feel like they can just hang out here if they want and it's, it's been like it's especially gratifying in the early evenings when you see kids out here and things like this and you think they've had such a really tough time you know a time that they should really be having the times of their lives and instead they're trapped indoors with their mums and dads you know and it's it's like really heartwarming to hear shouting and giggling coming from over here you know in the in the early evening yeah, so basically this this bit of land adjoins rockaway and it's on a very steep 45 degree slope south facing it couldn't be a better place for growing things but it's obviously extremely difficult to work on um, it's, a, it's intersected by this footpath which means that the public naturally have access to it all the time and, and I think with, with starting this project what we're trying, trying to do is, in, is encourage people in with a, a, a sort of I, I envisage a selection of paths that all interweave and always give you separate directions you know you can take choices continuously throughout and and maybe like separate gardens for separate little groups or joint projects and 
people can take a little bit of ownership of their own part of the garden. Uh, hopefully, if people get involved, that would be a great thing, you know. And whether you want to send us a plant or you want to send us a fiver, we won't waste it. My name is Yotsi. This is Mehmet. Is Mehmet from Turkey? From Serbia originally, but it's been here in yeah, been in Bristol for a few years. Known the Rockaway guys for. Maybe not even maybe not the first Airbnb guest, but at the very start of it. We turned up here once with my wife, who I got married to here. So I had a couple of stories here already and once came here with Mehmet for a Sunday roast, looked at the garden, looked like you know there's loads we could do here. And then Mark asked us when can we start? Um, that's how it started. Yeah, I came to England like one and a half years ago and started to do gardening here. Yeah, I'm a bit more new to permaculture or the whole gardening scene. I think uh, it's only one and a half year ago when I first discovered a local community orchard. I started volunteering and that sort of brought me to a job in a city farm in Bristol. So I'm still learning all the gardening jobs and all the kind of permaculture ideas with the gardening. So that's the idea here that we will try to implement these sort of principles. When I very, very, very first came here and we ran it as a scrapyard, I, I, um, in the back of my mind, if we'd wanted to run a scrapyard properly, we'd have bought a place in Avonmouth or somewhere where, where people could have got in and out of much easier. And this is a little bit inaccessible and a little bit off the beaten track. And so I always really knew that that wasn't what we were going to do. And and in the back of my mind, I, I envisaged a situation where kids or adults with learning difficulties or anyone who felt like out of sorts or out of place could could arrive in in a minibus or whatever from come out of town whatever they, and they would park somewhere in this over, over here and then they would walk up through this garden that we're, we're, we're building through the house into the yard and somewhere along this journey, they might see something that sparks something in them that has previously been unsparked. You know, I, I, I don't have the right words for it, but we all know what it is. You know, when you, when you see that thing that makes, oh, I'm not mad. I'm actually somebody else feels the same as me. I can see, you know, maybe I could get into gardening. Maybe I could get into woodwork. Maybe I could get into metalwork. Maybe I could. Maybe I could think differently about all this. And so I think that's always driven me, this idea of doing that, you know, to, 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 cause we have these places that when I was a kid, we went to this place and you, you know, and you thought, wow, there's a whole possibility here that had never crossed my mind. And yeah, that's what I want to do really. And uh, this, so this garden project is, a, is the first part of it. I feel in order, in order for it to make sense, and, and for order, in order for it to outlive me, it it needs to self-sustain. It needs to be it needs to be funded by itself. It needs to employ people. The people need to be paid. The, 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 the people need to teach, and they need to be paid. And and we need to be able to afford to teach people who can't afford to pay for a course. Or so. It's, and and this is our first tentative foray into trying to get a bit of outside funding. So I've always been extremely reluctant to go to any government agency or anything like that and ask for money because I feel like you'd be constricted by what how they think you should behave and how they think you should do things and and I think how we do things you know sort of strikes a chord with people and they, and they like the fact that we're a little bit anarchic and a little bit we don't have to ask for permission for everything and um, it gets more done you know, more things get done, less meetings, more stuff getting done. And My name's Graham Burnett. I'm a permaculture teacher. I've been teaching permaculture for about 20 years now, I suppose, something like that. And I ran a permaculture course at Rockaway Park in 2017, I think it was. I guess permaculture, the essence of permaculture really, it's an ethical system really, based around earth care, caring for the earth, the resources of this planet, the... Uh, ecosystems, the other creatures and organisms we share this world with. It's about um, people care. Um, how do we care for ourselves and each other and for future generations? And fair shares. 
which is really all about kind of resource distribution. Um, there was that famous quote from Gandhi, um, there's enough for all of our needs, but not for all of our greed. Um, so I guess it's about sustainable food production methods, how we grow our food, how we interact with the land, how we create shelter, like how we create our buildings, transport, energy use, um, community, uh, all kinds of elements of what it is to be human and how we relate to this small planet we live on are encompassed, I think, by the ethics and principles of permaculture design. My name's Marta, and Mark's partner. I co-run Rockaway with him, and I run a um, vegan cafe here on site. And I love growing food. <laughs> so my dream is to be able to grow some vegetables, hopefully, in our garden and be able to use it in the cafe. Zero miles food. <laughs> Maybe the ethics is uh, like the people care, earth care, care and fair share as like basically take care of the land and nature and uh, take care of the community, the people is involved as well. It's not only about producing vegetables or fruits, it's, it's about the people as well and fair share. And I guess yeah, fair share, I really like that, um, that concept of permaculture because it's about you know, we don't just want to go and harvest all the fruit and harvest all the veg and whatever, you know, take everything from nature and then expect it to produce it again next year and then after that again, so... Leave some for the birds. Leave <laughs> some for the birds, leave some for the deer. <laughs> and the deer comes and takes it anyway. Much but, more for the deer yeah. than outside. <laughs> deer is not into permaculture. <laughs> here a few years ago, this whole area, all the way going up to the house, was overgrown with bramble and um, it was never cultivated before as a garden and we started uh, managing the bramble and cutting it down uh, sowing the grass and managed to get it to the state that it is now and I've started making little bigger beds for growing uh, vegetables and fruit and this is one of them and um, the idea is to have it as a forest garden, as an edible forest, so to apply a no-dig method, but also try and grow some perennials and edibles that we can use and eat. Uh, it's, it's mainly perennials, so there's a, there's a few fruit trees, an apple tree, a pear tree, uh, some figs, um, some berries, some globe artichokes, at perennials as well, some garlic and onions still from last year that we'll be able to grow again. But part, so part of what, what, what we've got with having what used to be a scrapyard facility next door uh, was the Environment Agency, in the interest of the environment, made us concrete nearly all of it. So we, we, we amassed tons and tons of water on this newly laid concrete. Um, and on top of that, we have the water that's coming out of the sewage treatment plant, which is clear enough to pump into a river, but we don't have a river to pump it into. So we've, we've, we're working to sort of pump the water over here and let it percolate through what eventually will be the garden. Uh, as a bit of an oversimplification of it, but yeah, with, the sa with the, being on a south-facing slope and having a plentiful supply of water, it's, it's ideal conditions to be growing. I know it looks a bit like devastated at the moment, but we had a, a huge weeping ash tree just here. And uh, we had some tree surgeons come in a couple of weeks ago to look at pruning a few branches off the trees that are overhanging the house. Um, but they noticed that the ash had, had ash die back and said this is going to have to come down like more or less straight away. So we've got all this carnage of the ash tree. While they were here, we were remarking on how wonderful this oak tree looked over here. And then two or three days later, we noticed it had this massive split in it, and we had to pollard it drastically to uh, to save it, basically. Um, but I think it's all right now, but obviously we've got uh, quite a lot of mess to clear up, or quite a lot of material to make things with. This area here, we terraced a few years ago using um, dry stone walling as you can see and these beds have been used for 
growing annual edible crops like salad, salad leaves, um, beetroots, pak choy, tomatoes. Over the years I, I got more, more and more interested in a permaculture approach to gardening which is as natural as possible without using chemicals or turning over the soil. Um, the idea is that the nature looks after itself if, it's, if, it, if it has a chance to be left alone. Companion planting is quite important in permaculture, so just choosing the right plants that grow together benefit from growing together. So there's no need for human intervention in terms of uh, dealing with pests or bugs or diseases. What I really love to develop on the side is a more sustainable way of growing food um, and also create a space where pe people from the local community are, ab are able to enjoy us as well. Either just like a little respite on the daily walk, on the footpath or just a little piece of quiet and maybe a little inspiration. Also if they want to get involved and do something with other people in the community, we'd like to provide that platform and space. We've got, we've got something like 20 or 25 units people working in currently and uh, these will be we've got jewelry makers and metal workers we've got a blacksmith we've got wood people working in wood people working in glass um, that we've got the caterer inside the vegan cafe that we've got the rehearsal space we've, we've got a lot of very talented people who could be sharing their skills with with other people and um, you know and it would maybe give them a day's work a week or whatever to run a course in in their particular specialism or whatever throw that out to the rest of the world and if you've got something that you can share with somebody else perhaps perhaps you're retired or perhaps you you know you, you might kick in your heels and but you've got some amazing skill that people would be glad to learn and I think even in uh, the moment even just the process of bringing people together so they're not so scared of each other anymore after spending so long sat in a room on your own it's going to be difficult for people to come out and and just talk to other people you know we've not we've not seen other people for a year now you know it's uh, it's going to take a lot of fixing and also there's a I, I, I feel a massive passion a massive um, yearning for for something different you know that we've all learned that to live without the life we had before and and we've all seen a lot of negatives in that and we've all seen a lot of positives in that and I think there's a massive appetite to learn about alternative ways of doing things or alternative ways of living and it'd be great for people to be able to just be able to, to access that somehow because I'd imagine it's quite a daunting thing if you're sort of sat on a housing estate in the middle of Nuneaton or somewhere and and you've got no one you know can point you in the right direction to, where you can meet and, and I'd like to have that sort of open house sort of policy way where, where people can come and find something that appeals to them. In six months time hopefully a few more fruit trees growing they're gonna be only small so looking from this spot maybe the landscape won't be that much different hopefully we have dug a path through the whole slope so this can be a bit more accessible because it's very steep. By in years time I'd like it to see more trees definitely. Yeah it will take time it's, it's like season by season it will develop it's more than months. You know, obviously the, the major expense as always is, is going to be with people but then with money we can go and buy big sacks of compost we can we can buy the trees we can buy the plants people could contribute it, this is nothing we don't necessarily need to have money maybe you've got some plant that you've got grows really well where you are you think it might suit this environment maybe you could just wrap it up in a cardboard tube and post it to us this you know at any level at all or maybe just come out and pick up a pick up a thrasher and cut a few brambles down you know so, so if you sat at home and you're not wondering what to do come and have a go you know come and help So what is it about the nature of Rockaway Park that lends itself to a project like this? Well, there's so many benefits, really. They really fit under 
all the stuff that we talk about in permaculture. There's all those environmental benefits, improving biodiversity, restoring local ecosystems, all the educational opportunities, experiential learning out in those natural ecosystems, learning about sustainable design in practice, traditional skills, tree care, pruning, grafting, and it's great for children to be taught, they can be taught the core subjects using that kind of forest garden or permaculture or community garden environment. Loads of health and well-being benefits of course. Very therapeutic, just being out in the open air, interacting with other people, especially as we kind of come out of this period where we've all been kind of rather isolated for each other, from, from each other. It's going to be really nice for people to kind of come together again, I think. I think it could be economic opportunities, you know, producing crafts, trading produce, making jams, all that kind of stuff that can bring in an, in an income. And of course, community development, as I've already said, which I think is probably the key thing there, really. Yeah, just so many great things about it. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. and Can't wait to visit. <laughs>